John chapter 6. I'm not going to get this done in one night. Interesting chapter. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. It has four names in the Bible. That's one of the problems people have with the Bible. Is it Simon or is it Peter? Is it Abram or is it Abraham? Some places in the Bible have definite names. There's uh, two Bethlehems, I think there is. And a great multitude followed him. So he's got the crowds. There's nothing done secret. You can't. Because they saw his miracles. They're following him because of the miracles. Remember that was one of the things that testified of God. We did in the previous chapter. John the Baptist, the works would be the miracles, the Father, and the Word. Which he did on them, on them, that were deceived. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was not. We're coming up to the second Passover of the ministry of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is a year, no, two years in his ministry. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He looks up, he's on a mountain, here comes a whole bunch of people. This is the same thing that happened in chapter 4. When that woman went in the city and got all the men, here comes a whole group of people. And saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, so Philip's been there. He's been traveling with Jesus. Whence shall we buy bread that we may eat? And the Bible records over 5,000 people. You know, here comes a group of people. And Jesus turns to Philip, hey, uh, going to buy bread? And, you know, mankind looks at those people like, yeah, right. Now you got to get this chapter. You got to get this chapter laid down or you're going to have a false doctrine. Bread. Physical bread. Why? White, rye, barley. Bread you can buy in a bakery. He says go buy bread. You give a baker money and he gives you bread. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Look at that. Jesus, God is tempting, trying the prophets, uh, uh, the disciples. He, Jesus already knew he was going to, he's going to bless the meal, he's going to break it. He already knew about, you know, they're going to take up a whole bunch extra. But he turns to Philip and says, Philip, hey, how much bread are we going to buy? He knew Philip's reaction. And God will do that to us. God will put us in circumstances that he's already known what the end's going to be. He just wants to see us freak out. And then trust on him. Philip answered him, 200 pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may take a little physical bread. Jesus Christ is in complete control of this situation, even though Philip's like, I don't think so. We couldn't even spend a year's salary. I'm looking for a note. Yeah, I got a note here, 14.8 of John. And then Philip goes on to say, if everyone takes a little tiny piece of bread, we would have to buy 200 pennies worth of bread, Jesus, and we have to give a little ration. Physical. Physical. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, says unto him, steps up, there's a lad here. Mark 6, 38 and 39. There is a lad here 
which had five barley loaves and two small you know, two small fish small fish it is an adjective to tell Jesus we ain't got enough Andrew walks up to, to Jesus we got five barley loaves and we got two little fish joins in with Philip your 200 worth of, of bread no now this is just comical because this would be us you know they're human we're human Jesus is God he'll take care of it but but we keep forgetting that we keep forgetting the past blessing listen he's gonna in the gospel he feeds multitudes of people twice and they still don't get it there's a lad here anybody care to know what his name is so you can write a book about him don't think because you give something to Jesus that Jesus is already going to honor you if you did the Bible says okay that is your reward now if this child ever got saved I don't know anything about him but if you ever got saved you imagine what his story would be in heaven bring the little lad here and I'll let him have Bible study what would his Bible study what we're reading right now how I can never see this happen like this lad saw it happen I have never had a party where I've been to and there has been more food afterwards than there was food brought out and yet this lad will be able to say I had part of it because I gave it to Jesus and you won't believe what happened and it's funny because you don't ever see the disciples giving now there's a lad here and I don't know if Andrew uh, Push this boy giving his food or anything like that. We just, here's his little boy, a lad. But we are, but but what are they among so many? Again, physical. We're going to stress that in this chapter. Here's a physical fish, a physical loaf of barley bread. I know there's five and two, but you know, one of each. Here they are, Jesus. It's physical. So they come to Jesus and say it's impossible. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. I bet you the disciples love to hear that one. Oh, Jesus, you know what they're thinking. We just told you we can't do this. And now you want us, as they come into the restaurant, they want you want us to seat them. You ever you got the idea of the restaurant seating you? Here it is in the Bible. They're walking up to Jesus and the waiters are now going to sit the people. Now... There was much grass in the place. Mark 640, Jesus is organized. It's not done haphazardly. Sit them down. Can we read Psalm 23? Makes them sit down. So the men sat down in the number of about 5,000 men, not women, not including children. Then you can throw all kinds of numbers you want. Fact is, there were 5,000 males, the men, adult men. And Jesus took the loaves. God, Jesus. As far as we know, five. He distributed them to the disciples. He makes them sit down, gets them orderly. He takes the loaves. He blesses the loaves. He gives to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes. As much as they would. Look how Jesus does it. There's an ordinary fashion. It's not haphazard. It's not chaos. And then the fishes. You know, that P.S., that's like in, in, in Genesis 1, he made the sun and he made the, oh yeah, by the way, he made the stars also. Don't you love God's little P.S.'s in the Bible? Yeah. I'm... As much as they would, you know what that means? They ate whatever they wanted to eat and how much they wanted to eat. They didn't slack off. There was no, there was no, uh, uh Ran, I mean, what was it? Ran, or, uh, I can't say the word. Rations. Here, here's bread for your table. 
we got more. I don't know how, but we got more. I don't know how more. What on earth? It's just like the manna. There was enough for yep. everybody's eating. And when they were filled, they didn't just eat what they wanted to eat. They were filled. He said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. There is no waste with Jesus. He doesn't have a dumpster outside of his glorified restaurant, if I can use that rightly, with thrown away food. America is going to have to give an account of her wastefulness. Now, I've worked in restaurants. i worked in stores as stuff gets thrown out. So look at the order here. Make them sit down. Bless the food. Hear disciples. Give it out. Hear people. Eat all you want. We're full. Gather up the fragments. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. There was more than five barley loaves left and more than two fishes left. And you just picture that little child and his eyes bright open, his mouth, uh, uh, what? And the disciples were there, 12 baskets. Each disciple had a basket for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle, that's definitely a miracle, that Jesus did, said, I wish Jesus would do that with my Reese's peanut butter cup. Open up, there's two in there, and just keep on pulling one out. But he also did this in the Old Testament with a widow woman in oil. He also did this with, with cake meal for another widow and her son in Elijah, or Elijah. I can't always get those two mixed up. This is not new. This was something to say, hey, this happened twice somewhere. We read this before. Healing leprosy. We're supposed to go back to Naaman in the Bible. What Jesus, you notice what Jesus does? He, he brings your attention to back to something that was in the scriptures. He's not pulling this out of, your, out of his hat. He's not a magician. He's God, and he's honoring his word. Testimony number four that we read yesterday. The scriptures. Two widow, widow women could say, I don't know how God did it, but he did it. The entire nation of Israel, as my wife said, with the manna. I don't know how he fed us for 40 years. Then that man has stopped as soon as that day when they were in Jericho. They crossed the river. And they ate of the old store. The, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of true. That prophet, that prophet that should come into the world. There's that prophet of Moses. Deuteronomy 18, 15, and 18. Now, when, I, when it comes to salvation, I'm strict. I'm hard. But I don't know. I don't know between you, God, and Satan. But the Bible says with the heart, with the mouth. I believe that these people, a verse we're going to read, hopefully we're going to get to, that they're saying this with their stomach and not with their heart. If you've ever read through John chapter 6, you got to wonder, was this really heart where they really got saved? I think it's with the stomach. I'm going to go bypass the head and go right down to the stomach. And the Bible speaks about your belly being a God. I'm going to believe the majority of this multitude did not get saved that afternoon. They got full, but they didn't get saved. And I'll back it up with Scripture. I'll back this up with Scripture, with Jesus' own words. So let's read on. When Jesus, therefore, perceived, knew ahead, I can't do that, foreknowledge. Only God has foreknowledge. 
Well, why not? All right, let me sit down with him and let me have some questions. Okay? I won't even ask questions about myself. I'll ask that fortune teller their questions. First of all, question is, number one, you've got to have at least one month for your life insurance. When are they going to buy their life insurance one month before they die? And then number two, I'm going to march them out to the cemetery and have their tombstone read the date they're going to die before they die. If you can't tell me that, Jesus did. Jesus knew the hour he was going to die in a day. Perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. Well, isn't he king of king, lord of lords? <laughs> this is political. Here's a political thing that people don't want you to talk about political and religion. Right here in verse 50. We're going to make Jesus king. So this would be victory over the Romans. We're Christians. We're going to take over the government. We're going to make this nation a Christian nation. Under God. That's what they're saying. We're going to make Jesus our king. And you would say, yay, the Bible says he's to be king. Satan's showing up again. This is not time for Jesus to be king. It's time for Jesus to be a lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You know what would happen if they were to make Jesus king right now? Remember that temptation that, that Satan offered? If you were to bow down and worship me, I'll give it to you. There it is. There it is. It's not Satan offering it. It's the people. Come on, Jesus. Take Satan's kingdom before you're supposed to take it. Bypass the cross, Jesus. That's exactly what's going on. He departed again into a mountain himself alone. He left. I am not going to usurp the authority of the government. It is not my time to overrule Roman. It's not time. I'm here to go to the cross. And when even was now come, about 6 p.m., his disciples went down into the sea. And it's commanded by Jesus, Matthew 14, 22. Let's read a note here. They wanted a king to feed them, not to be honored. They wanted a welfare nation that king would provide them with all the food they wanted. And we'll read that later too. You know why so people are happy with American government and come many, many, many countries over there? One of the things is we'll give you free food. And when evil was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. It was now dark. Underline that. Because this is going to get a little creepy here. It was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. Oh, here comes a storm. Fishermen. Four of them are fishermen, at least. So when they had rolled about five and twenty or thirty furloughs, they see Jesus. Wait a minute. It's dark. It's a storm. The clouds are blocking isn't that weird? Yet Jesus didn't have that light about him, but something about they seen Jesus walking. Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship so they see him coming in darkness. What is this a picture? What is picture that Jesus is coming to a bunch of Jews? Very few out of the entire nation of Israel. What is this picture? This picture is the second advent. Here I come, boys. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna save you out of your destruction. Look at that. You got the second advent in, in the Gospel of John, and Peter is eliminated, not even mentioned about walking on the sea. We're gonna take our eyes off Peter for a minute. Here comes Jesus in darkness, and they see him. Second advent. Very few twelve disciples out of an entire nation. You know how many Jews are going to be when Jesus comes? Not very many. Drawing nigh the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. 
Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Jesus will take them into the land. The day following, the next day, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one wherein the disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. They're looking for Jesus. Breakfast time. Howbeit, there came other boats from Tiberias near unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. God did it. Capital L. These people are looking for Jesus. In the parentheses, the Holy Spirit said that God gave the bread. In reality, a little boy gave the bread and Jesus blessed it. That little boy did the work of God in the hands of Jesus. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there in the mountain or anywhere, Neither his disciples. They took ship and, and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Doesn't that, doesn't that look good? Let's say we stop right there. That's it. Then in John chapter 6. They came seeking for Jesus. So what would your Baptist church say? They're going to get saved. If you stop right there. They're going to get saved. They're looking for Jesus. Really? Really? You haven't been in a public ministry for Jesus at all. You don't have your car decorated for Jesus and people come, well, you're a Christian, you're supposed to help me. That's what we're getting to right now. That's my family. Yeah. We run into this about maybe once a month. Yeah, weekly. weekly. They're coming to Jesus. I've got bad news from the doctor. Come to Jesus. Oh, they're going to get saved. Really? I've been a Christian enough and seen enough to say, really? If you stood in my shoes and the people I've been with and the Christians I hang out with, you'd be in the same shoes I am in. The thought. Seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him. Oh, look at that. They found him. Oh, it's getting better. Oh, oh, man. My holy goose pimples are goose pimpling. Oh. They gave to Jesus. They found him on the other side of the sea. They said unto him, Rabbi. They just marked Jesus as just any other rabbi running around. Is Jesus just any other rabbi? At least the disciples called him master and believed who he was. Rabbi. So you get people... Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When camest thou hither? When did you get here? How did you get here? Should have been the question. You want a miracle? Listen, they're still talking about jokes and everything. Jesus walking the sea, but they don't talk about the, the 5,000 being fed. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily. Now, he's going to do a Nicodemus right now. They greeted him. Hi, Jesus. How you doing? How'd you get over here? Verily, verily, I say, un say unto you, ye seek me. Yay, amen. Glory to God. Not because he saw the miracles. Jews require a sign. If you receive those signs, you mean you're in great shoulders. You're in great thing with God, Jehovah. But because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. You didn't come looking for me as Savior. You came looking for food. Now, soup kitchens are good. Preach a, preach a message. Get a meal. Now, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say, hey, it's rotten. Don't do it. It's good. But a lot of those people that keep coming, in, they'll come and hear the message just to eat. And they'll come and they'll think, hey, if I don't say that prayer, and if I don't get in that water, I ain't getting that chicken. I'll do whatever you think I, I think I want to do. Did I say that correct? I will think whatever I think you want me to do, because you'll have an altar call. I think that in order to get that mashed potatoes, I'm going to have to do your altar call. I'm not saying anything's wrong in food kitchen, but I'm telling you what they think so they can get the food. 
And God, Jesus Christ, said, you didn't come to me. You seek me. The Holy Spirit said, you sought me so I can feed your belly. How did you get saved? You baptized me. So let's look at one of the, one of the broad ways. If, I, if you feed me, you become a god. Explain to me food stamps. I'm not talking about people who really need it and have a job. I'm talking about people who don't do nothing and just feed me. Open your mouth and feed me. We're so lazy today. We will just put it in electronic funds for them. Now we're getting stores today. You just have to go online and order your groceries. And we'll deliver it to your house. And your taxpayer has to pay the $5 fee or whatever it is to, for them to deliver it to your house. This is what happened here. They got free food. They were going to make him king. So that he will feed them for the entire life. Our, your royal subjects give us food. And when they come to Jesus. And it looks good. They're seeking Jesus. Says, you didn't come to me because me. You didn't even come for the miracle. You're a bunch of Jews. You seek signs. That's the nation of Israel. That's what you were settled upon with Moses my servant. You didn't even care about them. You didn't even think about the fact is where that food came from. There's only five. Now there's 12. Your belly's fat. You just came with your mouth open and say, feed me. The broad way. Many people go into food kitchens. Very few will come out saved. Many of them will come out with a full belly. And they even will take home some stuff. I'm not hitting the food kitchen, but let's just look at what Jesus said. Many of them that go into those things, they're just going just for the food. And they didn't listen to a word that Jesus said. And we're not done with this chapter yet. Man, we're going to see a church split. We're going to see a false doctrine. Right now, you know the problem we have with the Bible right here, right now? We have physical bread. And there's a lot of places today, in, in the name of the gospel, things happen, but few do get saved. But the more will not get saved. And the more that go into this kind of ministry, anything that you feed the people, we will have a fellowship and you call all your family and your best friends over who are not saved. Yeah, they're coming in for the free food. You're just fattening them up for the for the broilness of hell. You're making them plump for hell. That's all you're doing. And there'll probably be some people that walk up to Jesus, the great white throne judge. Well, I went to that church fellowship. What else do you want me to do? Depart from me. I never knew you. But Jesus, didn't we sit down and have the bread? Didn't we? You, you told us to sit down. Didn't, didn't we sit down? You told us to eat. Didn't we eat? Yeah, but I never knew you. You never knew me. Food can be used to put a man into hell and Satan knows that. The lust of the flesh. What was the very first sin? No, take that back. What was the very third sin that got man into trouble? Number one was Eve added to the word. Then she subtracted from the word, either or. And then what was it? What was the sin that, that damned our souls to hell? She ate. So things haven't changed in human nature. They want to eat. Eve wanted to eat. These people want to eat. When Eve ate, oh, that's hard to say. When Eve ate, that got her no closer to God. When these people ate, they didn't get any closer to God. You got to get that. And I'm not hitting on. on on soup kitchens, but you better realize, and I've seen rebaptizing rebaptizers in the soup kitchen stood before the people and said, "You've already baptized me in this tank once before." I've already seen it. So, watch what he says: "Labor not for the meat which perishes, physical." Let's start getting this down now in order to get this chapter. You go to work, you earn money, your wife calls you up, emails you, texts you, whatever it is, we need food, bread, and milk. 
okay and you go to the grocery store you get your milk you get your bread you get what else is on the list you, and then you go to the cashier you give her your money you get to take your home you come home you give her a bag what she ordered that's physical get that i'm gonna get this because this is gonna be in two parts we're not gonna be able to do this in one night you're gonna to have to listen to this one in order to listen to part two. You're gonna to have to listen to part two before we get to this one. If the Lord tarries, Lord comes, Amen. Glory to God. You won't get the rest of it. Labor not for the meat which perish. That, doesn't that sound kind of weird? Because if we don't work for bread, we're going to die. And yet, if you were to follow Jesus completely, well, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Hey, doesn't this story also sound familiar? Of what we've already studied in John isn't this the woman at the well the physical and the spiritual water uh oh get that know that there's water that she said hey you don't have a bucket and Jesus said hey guess what you don't need a bucket hey there's bread that you get with money hey you don't need the money hey Jesus how can I go in my mother's womb again Hey, I ain't talking about that birth. This is a running theme now of John through six chapters. There's something physical you can touch. I was going to say taste, but that rules out the... Wow, oh, sorry. Give me that one. You can touch. You can see. You can see a woman giving birth. You can see someone taking a bucket and getting some water. You can see bread. You cannot see the new birth. You cannot see the living water. You cannot see the, the spiritual bread that you're going to get now. That's important. You need to get that. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, everlasting water, new birth. John has a separation and tells you there's a physical and there's a spiritual. You got to get that for this chapter because somebody gets it all messed up when, when we finish. Unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. Run back to that water. Chapter 4, was it? Yes. 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Who shall, shall drink of this water? In the well, physical, shall thirst again. But who shall drink of the water that I shall get? You see how it matches? What did he get? Everlasting life at the end of verse 14. So if I go to the if I go to the store and buy bottled water, I get everlasting life. No. You get your thirst quenched and they put salt in it so you drink more water. The Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So with new birth, the water, and now the bread. Three straight chapters. You can't miss it. Then said they unto him. These are the people that had their bellies full. These are the people that just got fed. These are the 5,000. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now, doesn't that sound good? Any Baptist a whole like that, they got their belt knocked for salvation souls. This looks good. This is why when you soul win, you got to make sure that person really want to do what God wants them to do and not what they want to do. Jesus answers unto them, this is the work of God. You ready? You want to work? You want to work for your soul? You want to earn your way to heaven that ye believe on him whom he has sent. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe. If you notice that word believe, it's not just for something on the wall with faith and all that. It is much stronger that Paul says with the heart. I can believe all I want. I can believe right now there's going to be a tuna fish sandwich right here on the plate with a pickle.
What? I believe it'll be. So what must you do to be saved? The latest gospel written after the Pauline epistles has already been revealed. What does John say to us that Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not say? Believe. He's telling these people, he just they believe they'll give them another piece of bread. They believe that, but that's not salvation. That's just make your belly full. You can have a full belly and die and still end up in hell full. They said, therefore unto him, now watch this. What must we, what must we do to be saved? Believe on the work that God's given you, me the son. Then they say unto him, What sign showest thou? Now don't they got some nerve? And listen, you can ask my wife, my daughter, and my son. We've seen this in a food kitchen church. We even seen them complain over the free food they got. They've got some nerve to say what sign. Why don't you go over to that dung hill and take a look what just came out of your body? How about that for a sign? Sally, you're being gross. No, I'm being serious. Because what you just let out of your body is what Jesus provided a miracle for you. Because if Jesus did not do a sign, did not do a miracle, you wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom. What sign showest thou then that we may see? And believe thee. See, 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 that's the movie. Give me a movie and I'll get. Oh, you see that? But what does the Bible say? Faith cometh by. Yeah. Boom. There you go. That's why I'm against television ministries and television movies to be saved. These people didn't want to hear, they wanted to see. And believe thee, what doest thou work? We want to sign, we want to see it, we'll believe thee, what are you going to do for it? What work are you going to do for us? They don't want to work. They want free bread. So work for us, Jesus. That's why we want you king. They've got some nerve. We want taxpayers to work for us. And if we see that check come in, then we'll believe the government will take care of us. How's that? Now watch. Now watch. Our father did eat manna in the desert. As it is written. They're going to quote the scriptures to Jesus. That's not Jesus saying that. They're going to say, if you're really God, then give us the manna that God gave. Now we're going to run into some problems. Now let me ask you a question. Who is, what we're reading now, who is our fathers? Moses and Joshua. Okay. So you would say Jewish. Yeah. Right? Our father who art in heaven. How, how on earth did this become a Catholic doctrine? Right. Because what you're going to pick up now is Catholic doctrine. So do you see how the Catholic Church has now stolen from the Jews? Because we're going to get into the Mass before we're done. But the people who Jesus is speaking to said, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. Who in the scriptures ate the manna? The Jews. We, I'm talking about who are the group of people. It's the Jews. This passage will be quoted in your oh boy, I forgot the name of it, catechism for the Mass. But it's speaking to our fathers that did eat manna. No Roman ate manna. Romans weren't even around. So now you already seen. Listen, we're, this is a difficult passage to get through. Because if you ask a Roman Catholic, if you were to ask me before 19, said, have you ever received Christ? Yes, I did. Orally. And I would be able to go to, if I went to my catechism, say John chapter 6, and say, hey, look, see? And hopefully a guy who knew the Bible would say, well, did your fathers eat manna? What on earth are you talking about? Then it ain't written to you. 
Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as is written, Jesus. I added that in there. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. That's what they wanted. They're not seeking Jesus for Jesus. Out of their own mouth, they're saying their God is their belly. And they want to be fed. Their own testimony. Then Jesus said to him, Verily, very, this is important and important. I'm not changing the very way. I'm just saying, it's important. I say unto you, I'm going to say unto you, Moses, there's the kingpin. That's the kingpin of the scriptures. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. And he never did. Did the Bible ever say he did? No, he just said, listen, it's going to fall by a certain rate. You go out and you get it by a certain rate. And you bring it back and you eat it. Cook it, whatever you want to do with it. Manna Oreo, manna shakes, whatever you want with it. Go eat it. There was no, do it. Moses did not give it to you. Because look what it said. Our fathers did eat man in, in the desert. He gave them. He could be God or anybody. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Now let me ask you a question. Did a loaf of bread come down from heaven? Boom. So would you say that this bread is physical bread? It's spiritual. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ come in the flesh. As he told that woman, I am the living water. So is Jesus a river? No. He says, the bread that came down from heaven. Who is that? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave. Jesus was born in the manger. The spiritual bread that they need to survive. The living water they need to survive. The new birth that they need to get to be saved is Jesus Christ. Now we're getting into spiritual bread you can't buy. You guys want bread? God is giving you bread. It's me. Now Jesus did not look like a loaf of bread. Bread was a staple in the Jewish times. It wasn't a Big Mac. It wasn't steak. It wasn't pork ribs, especially pork ribs. Bread was a staple. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. All that water. No one drank water in, in John chapter 4. No one was physically, spiritually born in John chapter 3. And the rest of this chapter, he offers no more bread but himself. You've got to get, there's physical bread and there's spiritual bread. There's a physical realm, there's a spiritual realm. There's the kingdom of heaven where birds fly in it. You build a house, you got trees, you got apples, you got a river, you got bugs. And you got the spiritual kingdom of God, holiness, righteousness, love, joy, peace. You got a physical person you can punch and they go, ow! You got Casper the ghost, you punch and poof, it goes through. For the bread of God is he, is he, a pronoun, which cometh down from heaven, that's Jesus. And giveth life unto the world. I'm the bread. Now they're not going to start chewing on Jesus. They will not chew on Jesus. Then said they unto him, Lord. Now they're going to be nice because they want to eat. Give us, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now they're thinking physical again. They want a loaf of bread in their hand. And no loaf of bread came out from God. They think it's going to rain manna again. And no manna is going to rain. And Jesus said to him, I am the bread of life. Poof. Jesus becomes a loaf of bread right there. No. Absolutely not. I've never seen a picture of Jesus being painted as a loaf of bread and, the, and the, the disciples as little pats of butter or something.
Run to John chapter 4 with the woman at the well. He's not water. I've never seen Jesus painted as a river or a well. I've seen pictures of him at the well with the woman, but I've never seen him in the well flowing. I've never seen a picture of Nicodemus going back into his mother. But chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 6 are the same thing. There's a physical and there's a spiritual. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Isn't that what he told the woman? That he come to me, you shall never thirst. If the Catholic Mass is so great, why do you got to come back the next day? Or, as I was growing up Catholic, the next week. See, Catholics forget, if that Mass is so good, you would only have to take it once. Shall never hunger. That matches chapter 4. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Oh, look at that. He ran right back. The disciples should have got that one. He could call up a Samaritan and say, you boys, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we know what you mean, Lord. How do you know what I mean? Because we have believed on you. We have drank from you. And we're saved. And we know. And the Samaritans did not pull out cups. So Jesus just gave you a reference by John, the Holy Spirit, to run back to your Bible and go back to John chapter 4 and read John chapter 4 and understand John chapter 4 before you continue on to John chapter 6. Did you like that? Did you like that cross-reference that God gave you in his own Bible? I guarantee probably all the Bibles messed that up. I don't know. I don't care. I don't get into it. But I bet you it's messed up. I bet you that cross-reference is gone. But let's move on. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. Ooh. I've had people come, if I see Jesus, I believe. He just said, you've seen me, and you don't believe. There are people out there, that they'll, they'll go the other way, stay spiritual. I want to see Jesus. Even if you saw him, you won't believe. He won't be the type of Jesus you like. He wears a bracelet. You wouldn't believe what I do. <laughs> Anyone wearing a bracelet like that, but you won't believe what I'll do. Never mind, what would Jesus do? All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. How do you like that? Eternal security. In John chapter 2. Six before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, now you want to have some for, real fun right now? We're going to close pretty soon. You want to have some real fun? What city was Jesus born in? You know what Bethlehem means? You ready for this one? House of bread. Now, don't tell me Mary gave birth to a loaf of bread. Oh, Mary, you won't believe he's got your eyes and he's got the punk, punker nickel of Joseph. Give me the butter knife. Let's slice them and eat them, a Catholic would say. If Jesus was born to bread, they would say, let's slice them, start eating them. They didn't do that. They wrapped them in swallowing clothes, not a, not a bread wrapper. They didn't put them in, in the bread box. They put them in the manger. The bread that he's speaking about was the bread was in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Now that wasn't a kick in the pants. If God is not humorous to say that my son was born in the house of bread and Jesus is saying, I am the bread. Go check where I was born, boys. God is such a, I love him, he's such a joker. And this is the Father's will. The people... What's the will of God? What's the will of God in my life? This is the Father's will which has sent me. That's the will of God. Jesus coming is the will of God. That of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up again at the last day. 
Now these people who get on Christ are not going to come up at, at, at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to come up at the great white throne judgment and their names in the book, boom, there they are. We're not going to get into that. But we're talking about eternal security. And this is the will of him that sent me, God, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. There's that belief again. What is the will of God for all men? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son. The Jews. Then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which come down from heaven. Now we're going to close at that. I am the bread which come down. They know exactly what he just said. I am. They got it. This is no physical bread. The Jews got it and the Romans can't. You know what they just said? That manna that, that was not given by Moses but was given by God was Jesus Christ. Put that in your doctrinal statements.